This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and clearly this is not an Ultrabook. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad P70, a 17.3-inch workstation laptop. It's also available as the P50, which is a 15.6-inch laptop. has most of the same good stuff inside, with one exception, the graphics card. Anyway, this is for those of you who need a true desktop replacement, somebody who is doing serious 3D CAD work, if you're doing engineering design, video post-production for films. I mean, serious kind of stuff right here. YouTube, this would even be really overkill for most of us. Uh, financial simulations, all that sort of stuff. It is one of the few laptops where you can actually do this. Look, no hands, huh? It has a nice thick rear, though considering what's inside of it, not all that thick. Beefy build, the usual mill spec dust, water, you name it, resistance, vibration, high temperatures, low temperature, all the things you'd expect from a ThinkPad. And it's like the laptops of old. Do you remember when you could actually just slip a little latch there and pop the battery out? You can do that here. And this plate right here is easily removable with some Phillips head screws to access the internals, which we'll show you a picture of. We're going to look at the whole thing now. All right, so what's 7.6 pounds and costs around two to $3,000 on average? It's the Lenovo P. 70. This is a ThinkPad mobile workstation, and it's Lenovo's first with Intel Xeon option for the CPU. That's still a quad core 45 watt CPU, like the Core i7 you could also get, but it's got a little extra cash, a little extra oomph. Plenty of ports here, as you can see, even along the back edge, two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB C ports. The ports have ports here. We have a SD card slot, an express card slot, a smart card reader, three USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, a, even an optical drive here, DVD burner, and you can swap in a caddy to hold yet another hard drive. It's a big machine, of course. It is a mobile workstation, which means you can pick it up, but you probably don't want to take it everywhere with you. Lenovo also makes the ThinkPad P50, which is a 15.6 inch, around five and a half pound version of this, which has all the same stuff available, except the NVIDIA Quadro graphics only go up to the M2000M, whereas ours has the m 2 4000M. So it's still powerful for the little guy, but this one is everything to the max. The usual Lenovo backlit keyboard, excellent. Plenty of travel certainly here and tactile feel, but they don't have to worry about making this machine ultra skinny. You do have a number pad on the right side because this isn't just for you engineer types and, and movie makers. This is also for serious number crunchers. Uh, in fact, when we ran the perfume Benchmark on this, we had Monte Carlo simulations running. And the trackpad, check this out. We now have a new three button, th discrete three button trackpad going on. That's new. And notice that funny little thing just to the left of the trackpad. That is the X right color calibration device built right in and it comes with Pantone calibration software. Very nice for high end graphics professionals. So beyond the impressive CPU options, including the mobile Xeon CPU, the very fast Quadro graphics. The real show stealer here is the 4K IPS display. This is, this is the first time we've seen really 4K starting to show up in 17.3 inch laptops. You would have thought it would be there first, right? I mean, it makes the most sense. You're not having to scale as heavily, all that sort of thing. Uh, the manufacturer is really focused on 15 inch and below because that's where more laptop sales happen. So whether you get the Lenovo P70, the 17.3 inch, or the P50, you have the option of getting the 4K IPS display. This is a matte display, and it's, it's not one of those kind of adhesive, permanent adhesive anti-glare films that Lenovo puts on some of their ThinkPad Yogas and other machines. This really is just a matte panel, and it's stunning to look at. And you can see the level of glare or lack of glare as I shift the machine. There's really not much at all. Now, Lenovo claims that this has 300 nits of brightness. Our colorimeter said it actually exceeded 300 nits, so good stuff there. Color gamut, excellent. They're going up against the HP Dream Color displays, and they're doing a good job of it here. We don't just have complete sRGB coverage. We have 90% of Adobe RGB and 85% of NTSC coverage. So, wide color gamut, also very easy to calibrate and bring in line. There's also a 1080p touchscreen model, by the way, for those of you who don't have a use for 4K, but I think a lot of people are going to find value in the 4K unless you're still using a program that doesn't 
respond well to Windows scaling. Happily, many of them do, but I know some CAD programs still don't. It has very good black levels of 0 0.36, and that makes contrast almost 1,000 to 1, which is quite good. And then that owes to the brightness of the display. You can see the detail here. I particularly picked a photo I took of some elephants at the Dallas Zoo because there's so much surface texture and contrast there on their kind of mud-covered skins. It is a stunning display to work with. And when I mentioned calibration, one neat, really neat thing actually is the optional x right color calibration device built right into the bezel of the keyboard. Right there, there is a little glass eye. And if you want to calibrate it, it's as simple as, in fact, it'll remind you to do it every so often. It's as simple as closing the lid. It prompts you to close the lid, and then it measures the display. It keeps the display actually on, and you'll hear it beep. It'll tell you that it's going to beep to confirm it's starting, and it makes several tones while it's working, and it beeps again when it's done so you can open it back up again. It did a pretty good job of cali calibrating the display, but it's still a little bit on the green side right now, so it wasn't actually perfect. For those of you who are real sticklers for color accuracy, you really, really need to have that. I would still use an external USB calibration device. So this is Lenovo's first Intel Xeon laptop. You can get this with a regular quad-core i7 as well. Even if you get the Xeon, you're still looking at a 45-watt CPU, and it's not so different really from the H family that, of quad-cores that you'll see in a lot of workstation-level and high-end gaming laptops. Honestly, it does have a bigger cache. It has Intel HD 530 integrated graphics that's switchable, so if you want to save some battery power when you're not doing the heavy lifting, graphically speaking, you can do that. So we do have the Xeon CPU here, which is a 2.8 gigahertz, and it is the E3-1505M V5. So it's a quad-core, eight-thread, turbo boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz. And again, we have the NVIDIA Quadro M4000M with four gigs of VRAM inside. So how does it benchmark? First, for those of you who are used to looking at workstation performance analysis, here we have Spec View Perf 12, and you can see what the results are there for all the possible scenarios. This was a full run here that takes about six hours, actually, and the machine held up well. In terms of thermals, uh, no evidence of throttling during all this test. It is actually a very good test for that. Fans will come on. You're certainly going to hear them when it's working hard, but uh, not that super loud because, you know, you're working with a pretty big chassis here and two large internal fans and some intelligent cooling that pulls air through the keyboard and exhausts it out through the copious fans on the back and the sides. Now, for PC Mark 8, we ran the Creative Accelerated test here. Usually, we just do the Home Accelerated. In this case, Creative is a little bit more appropriate for the kind of work this machine is going to be doing. 42.25, a decent score, certainly. Now, for the Home score, it scored 29.82. I actually expected to see 3,000 or above, especially considering we have the fast NVMe SSD inside of here that really benchmarks quite well. For Geekbench 3, that's just your usual single and multi-core performance measurement. This is really pretty close to a regular non-Xeon Skylake quad-core 45-watt CPU. Very respectable numbers, many times faster than an Ultrabook because it has, well, twice as many cores, too, as an Ultrabook would. For 3 d Mark, for those of you who are interested in gaming, this is roughly equivalent to the NVIDIA GTX 970M in terms of gaming capabilities there. You can see our Fire Strike test is 6884. And that's a good showing right there, right in line with that. For Crystal Disk Mark, for measuring that fast PCIe SSD, those are very good numbers there. That's good to see because we've seen some uh, NVMe SSDs that weren't all that. Ours happens to have a Samsung inside. And that drive is the MZKV V512. For those of you who are wondering, it has two M2 SSD slots inside. It also has a 2.5 inch SATA standard drive bay where you could put a, either a conventional spinning drive or a, another SSD. And back to 3D Mark, here is the CloudGate test. Again, that's another good showing in there at 13,476. And for Cinebench R15, the OpenGL score is 98.88 frames per second. Excellent, really excellent. CPU scored 69.4 CB for the result there. So it benchmarks nicely, certainly. For 3D Mark 11, for those of you who are interested in the older test, it is still relevant for comparison's stake. The performance mode is scored 9105, and the extreme mode was 3604. Again, we're looking 
relatively speaking, pretty close to the 970 amp for those of you who want to game with this. For those of you whose content creation actually involves some writing, the keyboard is ThinkPad superb. I mean, just really, it, it's it's lovely to type on. It's quiet, it's damp, there's plenty of key travel here. It It's just good stuff. And, and as usual, with the backlight, it, you hit the FN and the spacebar key, and you can turn on the illumination. You got the track point here as normal for ThinkPad, but there's something new, again, is that three button trackpad here with actual clicky buttons for those of you who hate single clicky trackpads. That's not the case here. This does not move at all. Of course, you have the dedicated buttons for the track point as well. Works well. They call the coating Crystal Silk, a premium material that's supposed to really wear well and feel nice. Felt nice to me. Worked very well, too. And ThinkPad trackpads are also excellent, and it's made by Synaptics. It is centered under the space bar, which is pretty typical for laptops that have a number pad here on the side. And next to the number pad, there is a fingerprint scanner. It's the new modern kind where you lay your finger on the scanner and no swiping across the slit. It works quite well, too. The indicator LEDs are actually below the display over here for things like hard drive activity and all that sort of thing. Your lit power button is over here. And it does have a few creature comforts for those of you who, well, need to do, say, video production and actually hear audio. And for those of you who just want to enjoy some audio, the speakers in this are 2 watt stereo and has Dolby software for audio. Well, let's just hear it and see it for a moment playing video. M2 SSD slot. Killer Wi-Fi, killer Ethernet for great connectivity, a backlit red keyboard, a very good webcam by well. So obviously that looks quite good and it sounds quite good. Sounded like me, sounded very loud. It's a, it's a good audio system. It's rich and it's full. And of course, as a 17-inch chassis, it should be. In terms of upgradability, we're going to take a look at the underside and see how that works now. So the underside obviously has plenty of ventilation on it, and like I said, this is a very traditional laptop. If you slide the latch over here, you can pop out the battery. And this is what it looks like. This is a 96 watt hour 8 cell battery. This is pretty darn big, isn't it? It's bigger than a smartphone, certainly. Once you pop that out, always a good idea before you take apart your internals, you can remove the bottom cover, which is Phillips head screws right over here. You don't have to take off the whole bottom of the chassis, un unlike many laptops today. This is the service bay section. You got the two and a half inch drive bay here. You got two M2 slots. So you can have two SSDs in there if you want. You have your RAM slots as well. This can take up to 64 gigs of RAM, and you can use ECC, that's error correcting memory if you want. DDR4 is standard with this, and the ECC is something that you get with the Xeon CPU as an option. So obviously a very powerful machine, very serviceable. It has Intel 8260 dual band Wi-Fi AC with Bluetooth 4.1 as well inside. Now, since we have the higher end Quadro card, which itself has a 100 watt T TDP, this has the bigger of the two power supplies. This is a 230 watt power supply. In fact, it says it right here. If you get the lower end graphics card, you'll get the 170 watt. Now, this is one of the biggest power bricks I've ever seen. You could kill a rat with this thing. The cord is so heavy duty and thick, you could choke the rat with this thing. It is just. Wow, you know, but the, the whole package obviously is not designed for maximum portability. The fact you can carry it anywhere, unlike your CAD desktop, is sufficient. Heat, never a problem. This has never gotten burning hot. It'll be warm, certainly, but it does not get burning hot. So well done there. But for a chassis this size, even with powerful internals, we don't expect to see a lot of heat. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P70 with its 4K 17-inch display. Goodness. Intel Mobile, Xeon CPU, everything you could ask for, even a color calibration device built into the keyboard area here. It is a very powerful machine. It competes with the HP ZBook 15 and larger, obviously. I, and, and Lenovo has done a great job with this display. It really does hold up well against the dream color display that HP uses. If you need a mobile workstation, if you need as much power as possible in a package, you can still nominally pick up and move around. The P70 is certainly a strong pick. And for those of you who want something a little bit smaller, you know, the, the P50 is no slouch, and it is a lot easier to carry around. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.